we've seen that we can find the macroequilibrium in a graph with two lines representing two equations. The first line tells us what happens to overall purchases, or aggregate expenditures, as income in the economy increases. And aggregate expenditures are just composed of consumption, investment, government purchases, and net exports. The second line is just a 45 degree line, and it emerges from the equilibrium equation that says if output markets are in balance, what's being produced must be equal to what's being purchased. What's being produced is real GDP, which appears on the horizontal axis, and what's being purchased appears on the vertical axis. The only way those two can be equal to each other is if we're on the 45 degree line. So where that 45 degree line crosses, our aggregate expenditure line, is where we find the equilibrium level of real GDP. But there's one thing that we've held constant in this graph, and that is prices. We've simply assumed that prices are fixed. So now we want to ask, what's going to happen to aggregate expenditures as prices change? And we're going to find that there are three effects we need to keep track of. The wealth effect, the interest rate effect, and the exchange rate effect. And for each of those, we're going to ask, what happens if the general price level increases? And what happens if the general price level decreases. Now the most straightforward of these effects is the wealth effect. If you have $100,000 in the bank and there's an increase in the general price level, that $100,000 isn't going to be able to purchase as much as it used to. So in a real sense, you've become less wealthy. And when you're less wealthy, you buy fewer goods and services. So household consumption would fall. If there's a decrease in the general price level, then that $100,000 can now buy more than it used to. In a real sense, you've become wealthier. And when we're wealthier, we buy more goods and services, so there's an increase in household consumption. Now, the interest rate effect applies more to business investment. Suppose you're a business and you want to buy a bunch of new equipment for your business. In order to do that, you might have to go get a loan. So we have to look at the loan market, where we have loans on the horizontal axis and the price of loans, which is the real interest rate on the vertical. There's a demand curve and a supply curve that determines the equilibrium real interest rate. Now, if you want to buy that equipment and the general price level has gone up, it's going to cost more to buy that equipment. And so you're going to have to borrow more money. That's going to shift out the demand curve and as that demand curve shifts we're going to get an increase in the real interest rate. So an increase in the general price level leads to an increase in the real interest rate. It's become more expensive to get loans and so you're less likely to buy that new equipment by getting a loan. And even if you have the cash to buy the equipment you're less likely to do it because it's become more attractive to put that money into assets that are now getting a higher rate of return. In other words, the opportunity cost of using money to buy equipment for your business has gone up. And as that opportunity cost goes up, we would expect to see less business investment. Now, if there's a decrease in the general price level, then that equipment doesn't cost as much as it used to. So to buy it, you're going to have to borrow less money. The demand curve is going to shift in the other direction, and that's going to cause a decrease in the real rate of interest. So a decrease in the general price level leads to a decrease in the real rate of interest, a decrease in the opportunity cost of investing in your business. If you have the cash, you're more likely to use it because you're getting a lower rate of return by putting that cash into some other investment. If you're getting a loan, it's cheaper to get that loan. You're more likely to make that investment so business investment is going to go up. Now we might ask, does that also have implications for consumption, for household spending? The biggest thing that households borrow money for is home purchases. And home purchases are considered investments, so they're already included in this. But the households might also purchase durable goods, like cars or refrigerators or washing machines on credit. And to the extent that they do that, the real interest rate effect has an implication for consumption as well. If the real interest rate goes up, households would 
be less likely to make those durable goods purchases, leading to a decrease in consumption. And if the real interest rate goes down, they'd be more likely to make those purchases, leading to an increase in consumption. So the interest rate effect has a reinforcing effect on the wealth effect for consumption, but it goes in the same direction. Finally, we can talk about the exchange rate effect. If there's an increase in the real rate of interest, then people abroad are going to want to shift some of their assets to U.S. assets where there's now a higher rate of return. But in order to do that, they're going to have to buy dollars. When they buy dollars, they increase the demand for dollars, which is going to increase the value of the dollar. It's going to cause an appreciation of the dollar. The exchange rate of the dollar will go up. Now we can think about what that does to exports and imports. So when the dollar becomes stronger, then it becomes cheaper for us to buy goods abroad because every dollar is going to buy more in other currency. So imports are going to become cheaper. And as imports become cheaper, we're going to do more importing of goods. Well, what about exports? If the dollar is appreciating, then other currencies relative to the dollar are depreciating. So people who are abroad wanting to buy in U.S. markets are now doing so with a weaker currency. So it's going to cost them more to buy in U.S. markets. Every amount of their currency is going to buy fewer dollars than before, and so our goods are going to become more expensive for them. So we would expect to see a decrease in exports. Now we know that net exports is just exports minus imports. So if imports are increasing and there's a negative sign up front, then that's going to cause net exports to fall. And if exports are falling, that also causes net exports to fall. So net exports would fall as a result of this appreciation of the dollar. So the exchange rate effect says if there's an increase in the general price level, which leads to an increase in the real rate of interest and an appreciation of the dollar, that's going to lead to a decrease in net exports. And of course, if there's a decrease in the price level that causes a decrease in the real interest rate, the opposite's going to happen. Now we are the ones who want to shift some of our assets to other markets because we have a lower rate of return here, so we want to buy more in foreign assets. But to do that, we have to buy foreign currency and sell dollars. As we sell dollars, we see a decrease in the exchange rate for the dollar, a depreciation of the dollar. As the dollar depreciates, it becomes more expensive for us to buy goods in other markets. Every dollar can now buy fewer units of other currency. And so imports are becoming more expensive for us, which means we're going to import less. When the dollar appreciates, other currencies appreciate against the dollar. So other currencies are becoming stronger. For those abroad who want to buy in U.S. markets, exports, our exports to them, are therefore becoming cheaper. They, with their stronger currency, can buy more dollars for every unit of their currency, so they can buy our goods more cheaply. That means that exports, our exports to them, are going to increase. So now we see a decrease in imports, taking the negative sign into account, that means an increase in net exports, as does an increase in exports. So a decrease in the price level, leading to a decrease in the real, the real interest rate, leading to a depreciation of do the dollar, will cause an increase in net exports. So now we have an idea of how changing price levels in the economy will affect the different components of aggregate expenditure.